Hello, there is Avani. All right. Hello, hello. Good homework. That was good homework. Okay. Um, yes, you. Okay. Um, hello. Okay. Wow. Oh, this is a full. Oh, wait, the confusion. Oh, my God. The camera angles. Cray, cray. Yes, I see. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Oh, and all Mercedes of. Is oh my God. Wait, Mercedes is there? Wait. Oh, oh. Sure. oh, my God. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Wait, you can't call her Mercedes. Only I can. Okay, wait. Oh, my God. This is every. Wait, this is great. Oh, you're picking quite a day to. Oh, my God. I mean, I have so much to do today, and I'm not going to do any because I'm so thrilled. This class might win the award. You guys are like almost 100% video. That is amazing. I have to open up a portal for that. Wait. I have you're... a question. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Since we like almost have all our videos on, does that mean like extra credit on this exam? No. I, I, well, so, oh, look at Amanda. Oh, my God. Um, I... I'm like actually almost willing to, I will definitely tell you this. If you can get a hundred percent, I'm considering that, like you, you, one way or another, you're getting extra something, something. I don't, I don't know if it's literally on the exam, especially if we talk about this enough, then you're going to like, it's going to affect the exam, but no, uh, well, the extra credit you're getting on the exam, by the way, speaking of Mercedes, one of the things, okay, I'm not changing the subject, but I am. Oh, I didn't even say hello. You guys got me so distracted. This is like the first zoom class. I haven't even said hello to anybody. Whoa. I think you get extra something for that. All right. First of all, hello, Avani. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Chris. Hello, Yavi. Hello, Cheska. Hello, hi, you. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Melita. Hello, Michelle Q. Oh, my God. Literally, this is almost, if we count the avatars, this is almost 100%. I can't believe it. Uh, and good afternoon, hi, you. Hello, Michelle Q. Good afternoon, Marilyn. Good afternoon, Melita. Good afternoon, Freddie. Good afternoon, Amanda. Good afternoon, Yavi. All right. No, this is awesome. I, we do a lot to do today, but one quick thing, as long as you're there with, Mer I was going to ask anyway, as long as you're there with Mercedes, your lab is, you have lab with Mercedes today, today. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. So, um, okay. So, Cause I heard rumors that even if you're not getting extra credit on this exam, I heard rumors that you might be getting extra more, um, uh time to prepare for it today in lab by rumors i'm not holding her to it i'm not making any promises uh, but I, I hear rumors that you have a very 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 kind helpful supportive lab instructor which is worth way more than any number of extra credit points that i can give am i right or is oh uh, is it right uh, uh, okay yes okay 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 um so that's great. And honestly, I didn't think that that was going to be able to happen. So good. All right. I will consider the extra credit thing. I am going to open up a portal, though. The day we get literally 100%, which is record breaking, and the day we get 10K, I mean 100K, I mean 10K viewers on the YouTube, Um, then definitely there's no, I'm kidding about that part. But anyway, okay. No, this is amazing. Let's get to it. Um, What I want to say I mean, well, let me clarify one thing too, as long as Mercedes is there, cause just remember that anything you do today in lab or whatever is great, but I the free float problem in your exam, the free float problem, like I think is incredibly similar to the one that we walked through on Monday from homework seven. Um, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, you pro I don't know if you want to make that your first priority or not. In well, it's up to you. All right, whatever. I'm just, in my mind, you've walked through that problem already. Um, but uh, but maybe, maybe that's a matter of interpretation. But what we're going to do right now, now, let me pause again. I want to... I want to answer any direct questions anybody has or specific questions about the exam. I do want to do that. Um, uh, especially the more specific, the better. I mean, to be totally blunt, there were two specific questions that were asked in the last section this morning that I think were were really kind of perfect questions. Like they were just small enough that I could answer them in a reasonable amount of time. But I think they both ended up helping a lot of people and sort of giving, a, they sort of forced me to give more solutions and answers to things that I wasn't even going to talk about. So there were two really good questions in the other class. That's one reason you should watch the video from the other class as soon as it's posted. Number two, in the other class this morning, I walked through the, the 
problem called without a paddle. I'm going to do a screen share right now. Hold on. I'm going to switch the screens so we can be clear on this. Um, hang on one second. <sighs> Okay, yes, this morning, I mean, three hours ago, this problem that's on your screen right now, I walked fully through it in the other section. I think it's in everybody's interest if I do a different problem with you guys, like now, and you, and you both watch each other's videos. I mean, I really think that's efficient and helpful to everybody. So this problem, right, and that doesn't mean you can't talk about all of this in lab. I mean, again, jokes aside, like by all means, talk about anything and everything you want to in lab. But this one right here, I walked through in the other section this morning. I'm going to warn you. So you really should watch the video. I'll warn you right now. Um, I'll warn you right now that this one is super conceptual. Like I, I, also, also all the notes that I did on it, I'm going to include in your PDF when I upload. Like um, it's just one big PDF for everybody. So I'm, I'll be uploading like my solution to this to you when the class is over. But I do want to warn you, it's like a lot of writing on my part. And of course my handwriting is vaguely of the ax murderer variety. Um, so you will notice when you look at my solution, it's like pages and pages of words. It is not pages and pages of equations. The whole secret to this problem is if that you actually understand the physics, if you really take Galileo's principle of relativity seriously, then you use a physics concept to get out of a lot of math shenanigans. The problem could be solved another way. You could do a ton of equations and a ton of algebra and get the same answer, but it's really hard, I think, to do it that way. So the purpose of the problem is to show you how the difference between physics and math. It's to really, so anyway, I'm babbling, but I, I wanna warn you that, if, that when this problem's on your exam or whatever, you really wanna make sure you understand the concept and you and you wanna debate them with each other. Like maybe in lab today is a good day to do that. I mean, again, joking aside, I don't, I don't wanna pretend I know exactly how she's gonna do the lab and it's totally up to her and you. But um, if, if there are choices or whatever in lab, you may wanna talk about this because it's conceptual. Once you get the concept, then you, then, then you can get it. And then you want to explain it in your way to me heavily on the exam. It's one place in the exam in past semesters where if people just copied a couple equations and like just copied the procedure from class notes or whatever, they it was clear they did not understand what they were doing and they did and they did lose points there. So anyway, whatever. That's just a warning that this one, once you get it, you really get it and then go to town explaining it with lots of pictures and stuff. But don't underestimate. Okay. But that's what I did in the other video. What I want to do with you guys, I'm just, just so you know, I think the best thing to do with you guys, because again, I think we've largely talked about this one already, but again, do whatever you want in lab, of course. But what I think we haven't talked about at all this week is this one, which involves acceler, you know, which involves acceleration. So I, this is my plan for today. I absolute, I know I can get through the whole thing in under a period. So this is what, what I'm going to walk through unless there are objections. But again, one last, and I'll switch the screens in a moment. But if there are any sort of tight or specific questions about any sort of detailed aspects of the exam, this would be a good time for anybody to ask. Um, does anybody, do, do you have, or Merce, or Merce, okay, sorry. And honestly, I think it's great that I'm so pleased that Professor Talley is there right now. If there's anything that she wants to communicate to me or anything that I can say to increase the efficiency of your lab period today. Um, I'm all for it. Like we could take advantage of the fact that she's there right now, unless she's just trying to get work done. But anyway, at least tell her hello for me. But um, but if are there any questions right now that anybody? Oh my God, I'm this is a mess. Okay, um, like I, when you know when one of you guys is laughing, it's scary enough. But when like two of you are laughing at the same time, it's really scary. Uh, okay, um, I I you know what also I'll just summarize really quick the two questions that were asked. You, you watch the video, but the two questions that were asked in the other class. I'll I'll just say super quickly so you could just like think about it in the purple plushie. Someone asked, I mean, this problem right here, you can see it, right? Yeah. Someone asked in the other class, like, is it, um, is it an error? Or is it significant that it says that it's thrown up 
off a building. And if, if it's really true that it's thrown up a building, does it really go up for a while and then come down and then land below the building? And the answer is yes, all of that is true. And the up, it probably goes up for a significant amount of time. But the key trick or technique or answer, watch the other video, is that you, you, you if you do it correctly, you will get an answer that shows that your vo initial velocity is upward, but you'll never have to solve for how high it goes initially. You, It's not that it's too small to worry about, it's that the math will take care of it. You don't have to, you could do one equation and take care of the whole problem in one step, watch the other video, but you don't have to solve for how high it goes up in order to solve the problem. I, that's just a hint or a strategy or whatever. And then in, um, and then someone, else, oh, there's something in the chat. Hold on. What was he? What was he? Oh. Oh, great question. Direct chat person who may or may not be in the John Jay building right now. So someone is asking for problems that are mainly conceptual. Do you still need to do the five-step process? Yes. I mean, it's a good question, but the answer is yes. Like, like for example, that, that paddle problem, you de like you definitely have to do the five step process. You have to show me like, and, and I, I I would overdo it. In fact, like you'll start off with one picture, even though the problem gives you a picture. You should make your own picture because there's a lot going on in that picture, and then you make make the question clear because because it is a conceptual problem. It's very easy for people not even to understand what the question is. And then absolutely do step three. What what are your general definitions and principles? And I'll definitely tell you for that conceptual problem, your, your definitions and principles are Galileo's principle of relativity. But you'll see in the other video and you'll see in my notes that like, because it's so conceptual and so important, I would highly recommend that you write down Galileo's principle of relativity in one of the forms. Like we already have like four or five forms of it. And one of the forms has three cases. So you're probably not going to write all of them, but you're going to have to choose wisely, like which one's really relevant to this. And then I would recommend in step three of, of the without a battle problem, then try to put in your own words, like what it is about the principle that's going to allow you to have, do the problem. Like really, like use your own words and your own pictures in each of the steps of the five step method like that's a great question but yes like the more weird a problem is in a way the more you need to do the five steps so and i would recommend in that problem in particular the without a paddle once you get to step three you're talking about galileo's principle of relativity you're really you're in using your own words to show that you understand it and how you're going to apply it to this problem then when you get to step four and start applying it to this problem i would highly recommend new pictures new like because the problem's about perspective. So, so it goes back to train of thought. Like the more you could draw different pictures. For, in fact, I'm going to say this right now for anybody who's listening. I didn't say it on the other video. When you're doing the without a paddle problem, you, you'll know you understand it if you when you realize that like the whole key to the problem is what perspective you're solving it from. Like whether you're solving it from the perspective of the light, what reference frame you're solving it from, whether you're solving it from the reference frame of the land or the reference frame of the water or the boat, right? That's key to the problem. So what I highly recommend by the time you get to step four, I'm saying this explicitly. I'm like, I'm almost, I'm telling you, when you get to step four of the without a paddle problem, if you literally could draw two new pictures and say like, this is what it, the situation looks like from someone standing on the shore, but this is what the situation looks like from someone floating in the water. If you could do that in step four, you're really showing, you're making it very clear that you understand the problem. Like, And that would be in step four because you're applying to the specific problem. So long way of saying, very good question. Like, Definitely the five-step method is key to this exam. The only place that you can sort of be uh, cut corners on the five steps is once things get small and exercise-y, like the first couple of questions in the Roadrunner Coyote problem where it says like, what's what are you labeling as plus and what are you labeling as minus? Or when it gets repetitive, you can always say like, see above, see above or whatever. But, but the broader and deeper a problem is the more you definitely need to do the method. Okay. But sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. So hopefully that, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you for closing the loop. Great. Okay. It is.
what is i don't remember what oh it is a good afternoon okay okay that's a good question though oh, wait, they're still laughing i'm so do you ever feel like your spiritual fly is open hey how did you get that's weird i know wait you got me to raise my hand i didn't know you could do that or did i do it without really all right i'm gonna lower my hand but you did it i did it okay i'm so spazzy okay but thank you um whoever denied it supply okay okay um one other question i'll just say what they said in the other video like someone asked on no so on the roadrunner problem which uh, i mean sorry yeah the roadrunner problem i like i didn't walk fully through it in either class but someone asked a question about the other class that led me to say a lot of things about it again you know plug watch the video but i would also say that might be a very good thing for you to do in lab i keep saying that because i'm just but maybe i'm just trying to I don't know, make a, anyway, that might be a good thing to do in lab, but I'm warning you right now, like when it says the velocity is, is due east, the roadrunner's velocity is due east, but it says the acceleration is pointing west. That's not an error. That's not a typo. And it's not a contradiction. It's like meaningful and you want to think about it and make sure it's not a trick either, but it's like, but it does mean something. The acceleration and the velocity are in opposite directions. And that's sort of like key to the whole problem. So you want to think about what that means. But as it says in the other video, even though that's challenging and meaningful, it's not out of nowhere. Remember that the Toyo, uh, the Roadrunner Coyote problem really is just big old duck turned on its side. If something is going one direction while it's accelerating the other, that's literally equivalent to me throwing something up while gravity causes it to accelerate down. Whatever would, would happen there, whatever would happen to something that's going up while it accelerates down, whatever you believe about plus signs, minus signs, slowing down, speeding up, all, is what would happen to a roadrunner if a roadrunner were going east while accelerating west. It, it goes back to homework number four, I think. I'm, okay, again, I'll say that in more depth in the other video, but okay. Um, so I'm going to turn right now, I'm going to switch the boards in a second, but I'm turning, I believe the problem that would be most productive to discuss with you, I believe, uh, today is this one right here. And by the way, oh yeah, as it says, this is like lab four in effect. I'm going to turn to that. I'm going to pause for a second while I'm, it's 3.23. Yeah, I mean... We'll finish this, this one by the end of the period, but you know me, somehow or other, I'm going to go like almost, I'm going to go right to the end. So I'm going to pause for a second while I'm switching screens on this. Please take a moment to think, do you have any other specific questions about this exam? Um, just think about that for a second while I switch. Okay, and while we're switching, if there's nothing in the chat, just remember a couple other words of advice before, like, like, as crazy and, and unpredictable as perhaps I am with the exam, you have to turn it in on time. It's going to be posted tomorrow night, right? You have to turn it in. You have to turn it in on time for 3.05 next Monday, and you have to show up to class. It, if you don't show up to class, even if you have to end up leaving earlier, so you have to show up to class because if you don't, your colleagues think you haven't turned in the exam yet. And that's not fair. Like they will think, wait, that person's getting an advantage. I killed myself to do blah, 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 blah. So you have to turn the exam in on time. It's not like homework. And you have to show up to class. That's part of the exam experience. If you run into any difficulty, if this weekend, if you see that something's going to happen, that's going to threaten your ability to get the exam on time, you reach out to me and communicate. 
we might possibly be able to make an arrangement. Or even if I'm like, I, I'm sorry, I can't accommodate that, whatever. At worst, then the number of points that I would take off for it being late would be a lot less. And I'll be like a lot, if you, it'll be a lot softer and kinder if you communicate to me in advance about anything that's going to happen with your exam. Other than that, I'm going to assume it's going to come in on time. That's number one. Number two, once the exam starts, like tomorrow night, like once I post it, you still can and should help each other for sure. You can, and you can go on the web and all that stuff. But as far as me, as far as reaching out to me, you can reach, or Mercedes, you can reach out to me by text or email if there's something in the exam that's unclear. Like you literally, like you think there's a typo or possibly a mistake, or you literally don't understand what a question is saying and you need clarification, you can reach out to me. But when you can't, but if you reach out to me and do any version of like, can you look at what I'm doing so far and tell me if it's good or bad, tell me if I'm on the right track, I can't do that. And don't waste your own time doing that. Like, okay, and there's a thousand ways to, attempt that and they're all annoying. Um, you get what I'm saying. So uh, the bottom line goal, I just want to remind you one last time, since this is our first exam together and hopefully we'll have many experiences like this together. Your ultimate goal with the actual exam is to give me a document that is a final document, not a rough draft. Like you want to give me a, a well-presented document. It's not about answers. It's about presentation. Ultimately, you want to give me a well-presented, thorough document that really shows that you understand, that you haven't written anything that you don't understand, that you could defend vocally to me in my office if it came to it. And most important, the standard is you'll know that your exam is in good shape and is a final copy that I want and that you're going to get an A on. You'll know it is if you could imagine me sitting down with it and being able to follow everything you're doing without having to look at anything else. Assume I don't remember the original questions and I don't have them anywhere near me because that's almost effectively true. Like your exam has to make clear to me everything that I need to know in order to follow your exam. Like that is, it's an independent piece of physics. Okay, but I think that's clear to me. Okay, okay, okay. So we are going to now go over that problem that we're going to go over the Yabber bomber. Okay. Okay. Um, so we've got this. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh,
Okay, so here's my diagram, right? I think this is all the facts. Yeah, all right. So this is the situation. This was my step one, DFP. I hope your diagram is better than mine. Um, all right, and so then the first question. Oh, and, and, and you know, there's this whole thing about a freight elevator full of mops. I'll get to that. I'll get to that when I get to that. And that's a word of test taking advice. Like there's always a lot of information in all of these fact patterns at the beginning of the problem. You can assume that any information you're given does matter, will matter. Like we don't throw information at you just to, you know, to trick you, but that doesn't mean it's all going to matter all at the same time all at first. So you, you know, you take things piece by piece. Um, all right. So question A is, how much time sorry someone's here and also i forgot one piece of information but okay i think there's one other piece of information that i need to put in hold on oh yes okay there was thank god there is one other piece of information that i forgot to put in which is Okay, right, right, right. Okay, okay. So question A, question A. All right, and I'm gonna say one other thing too. I'm gonna to say let T equals zero be the moment bomb is dropped from Yav. Okay, so A, the first question, A is until bomb number one hits ground, what is the time, right? That's question number one. Okay, that's, so that's step two. Okay. Step three, GDP. Well, here's the G, so we're gonna solve for the time till it hits the ground. Here's, okay, well, in English, what's going on is this is exactly like lab four right now. Right. Like we've got this bomb. We've got this bomb that's doing something very complicated. It's moving forward while it falls down. Right. I, I'm just talking to you right now as a teacher. Like, like if you stand back and we're to look at this bomb, in fact, it asks you this later in the question. If you were to stand back and watch what this bomb is doing from the perspective of the earth, you would see a bomb do something like that. Right. It's going forward while it's falling, but it's falling faster and faster in the down direction while it continues to go forward at the same speed. So it's going to make a curve. Right. It's going to make a curve that's getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper as if a parabola section as it falls to the ground, just like the marble in lab four. Now, that's very complicated motion. I mean, I think. But this thing is asking for time to the ground. It would seem it might seem if we never did any physics before, it might seem that you have to calculate the amount of time that it takes something to do this really complicated arc. And, and maybe right now, if you're following me, maybe you would even draw something like this in the thing or make that observation. Like it seems like blah, blah, blah. But as we saw in lab four, and as we're learning now from Galileo, the key principle here, like there's going to be an equation I'm going to use, sure. But how do I know what equation to use? How do I know what to fill in for that equation? Blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm, the, way, the way I know what equation to use and how to set this up is I'm first going to invoke a principle, which is Galileo's principle of relativity, believe it or not, a particular form of it. I'm, I'm going to invoke Galileo's principle of relativity. According, so I would write like according to Galileo's principle of relativity, specifically, now what I think right here specifically is I'm going to use form number five 
I'm going to say now, and these are my words, you know, you, you well, I'm going to say every, sorry, every two dimensional physics problem is in fact two one dimensional physics problems occurring at the same time simultaneously yet and here's the key point yet or the key word yet independently now you might think or well, somebody might think that that's just a bunch of English gobbledygook that has nothing to do with it. Like, how does that help me with the math? How does that help me with this problem? What is that? Why it helps you is it says that I can look at this problem as an X set of, I, I can I can look at this problem as things, physics occurring in the X axis while independently of that, physics is happening in the Y axis. They're not affecting each other. This is key. So it means anything I understand about, well, it means, well, so I'm going to write thus. Okay, I'll just read what I just wrote in English. What I just wrote is thus, I can separate the physics on the x-axis from the physics on the y-axis and realize the time from plane to ground is determined entirely by gravity and the and by the height of the plane. Uh, notice a couple of... Like... Uh... I didn't mean to do that, but whatever. The time from plane to ground is determined entirely by gravity and the height of the plane. I'm going to pause on this for a second. I'm saying I'm saying this. The question, and again, this is just like what you did in lab four. In lab four, and you could even maybe mention that in the in the in the exam if you want to be a superstar. The plane drops this bomb. The bomb does this really complicated thing. But the question asks, how much time will elapse until the bomb gets to the ground? As far as I'm concerned, the only reason that the clock is ever going to stop, like the only reason the bomb is ever going to hit the ground in any certain amount of time is because gravity is pulling it to the ground at a certain rate, right? And the farther away, and gravity is pulling it down at a certain rate. The farther away the plane is from the ground, the longer it will take. But that means the farther away the plane is from the ground in the vertical direction. What the bomb is doing horizontally while this happens has nothing, does not affect the time at all, right? We can separate these two ideas, right? And again, that's what you did in lab four. So notice, and I don't mean to over, I'm going to go back and keep solving the problem now, but what I'm trying to show you, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm trying to explain this for anybody who still is trying to understand it, but also I'm trying to give you a model of what I'm looking for on the exam. 
Like, especially because someone very reasonably asked, like, do we really have to do the, like the five step methods when things are conceptual? Like, honestly, like, so my real answer is I love that question, but like the more conceptual it is, the more you should break things into steps. And what I'm writing right here, for those of you who are listening, what I don't want, what I don't want in the exam is just like raw equations and answers. That doesn't, because we know you already have the answers. That doesn't show that you understand anything. But I also, for those people who are listening right now, I also don't want you to just copy what I just wrote here. Notice I just spontaneously scrawled this all out right now. This is not a PowerPoint. This is not typed. This is me just scrawling things out right now in my language, in my words, in my attempt to convey the understanding to you. It's an example. What you want to do in the exam is something like this. Like the minute you understand a concept and you're going to use a concept, go to town in your way and show me your words for, for the concept. The more you're using your own words or your own separate examples, like the better. So even when I just said Galileo's principle of relativity, form number five, if I were one of you, what I might do is maybe first write down form number one and show like how form number five has anything to do with form number one. Like, like where did this form number five even come from? What does it even have to do with get the, et cetera, et cetera. You're not, in other words, don't copy this. Don't, this is not the answer. This is an example of how to explain the answer. So, and I will go on. I'm not trying, but I'm really trying to emphasize the more I want you all to work together, especially those of you all sitting at this table and everything. I totally want you to work together. I'd be delighted to know you were all having a slumber party Thursday night. Like, great. But then when the exams actually come into me at that point, each one of them should look like your personal demonstration of what you all figured out together. I cannot emphasize that enough. The more different the exams look, the better that is for everybody. I'm just, anyway, so I'll go on. But so, so this is the concept. This is the concept which then says, so now to go to step four. For step four, the concept then says, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, that I can start applying equations to the y-axis that involve the gravity and the height. So step four, P-A-W. Okay, step four, P-A-W. So I say here, here, y equals one half a t squared. So now you see what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm applying one of the equations. You might even want to explain why you chose this equation or where this equation came from or what it is or whatever. But I'm applying that equation that relates position to time to acceleration, but I'm applying it specifically and only and independently to the y axis. So I'm putting a bunch of y subscripts on all of my values to emphasize and indicate we're just plugging in the y values. Um, so here, y, the height is 1,000 meters, right? Oh, and I should, sorry, Um, I, one other thing I should have done, I'm sorry. Let's label in this original picture, just like I labeled south to be positive and north to be negative. Similarly, like independently, on the y-axis, I should also make decisions about plus and minus. For this problem, I'm going to label down as positive and up as negative. You don't have to do that. You could call down negative if you want. But the reason I'm choosing down as negative is because in this problem, in this problem, unlike others on the exam, on this problem, nothing is ever going up. Everything is going down. So there's no re. So I don't want negative signs if I don't need them. So I'm labeling down as positive. Okay. And, and I can even be more specific. And I'm saying like this original spot will um where the plane where the bomb starts i'll call that zero okay so if we're being really really careful what i really could have said here is like y minus y not equals blah 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 but y not is zero okay so y is positive 1000 meters positive right because i labeled down as positive a 
Y, the acceleration in the Y direction is the acceleration due to free fall, uh, the free fall acceleration due to gravity. That's G. Now, what is that? Unless you're told otherwise, you can round that to 10 meters per second squared, right? And, oh my gosh. Okay, that's a, okay. Wait, 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 it's an exam though. So very quick, Frank. You're in the middle of exam. Just say hi, quick, quick, quick. Okay. Hi, Felix. Hi. Okay. No homework for you guys either. Right, except they have an exam. So okay, I love you. I will come up. If he gives you homework, report to me immediately. Okay, that's funny. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Welcome back. Okay, um, I will report to immediately. Uh, oh, notice this. I, I please do notice this. I am making the ten a positive number, a positive number that might confuse some of you. It's positive because I'm calling down positive. So everything down is positive. It, I'll just go off. I mean, in your, you could make it negative. Bottom line, what I'm saying is if you like making gravity negative, a lot of people do, that's fine. But then you got to make the Y, the displacement negative as well. Like flag that point. If you don't understand what I just said, ask me later or, or ask Mercedes or think Professor Talley. But if I'm going to make 10, if I'm going to make, I have to make the, the, the acceleration and the displacement be the same sign because they're both going the same direction. I'm just saying, okay. And V naught Y, V naught Y, just like in the lab is zero, right? Because the bomb initially is just, it just falls out of the plane. It's not thrust down. It's not thrust up. It is moving forward, but that's a horizontal thing. So vertically it has, is, okay. Are you get what I'm saying? You can stop me if you don't, but so, so now I can solve. So we've got. Um, 1000 equals one half of 10 times T squared, right? And I'm solving for T. So 1000 equals 5T squared. So 200 equals T squared. So T equals the square root of 200, which is approximately 14.1 seconds. Um, right, I just want to, I'm just thinking about something for a second. Um, right, okay. Um, oh, so, so about, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Chris, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the chat. Yeah, until bomb number one hits the ground. Yes, thank you, Chris Emilita. Your chat is correct, and yay, summer party at Chanja. Right. Um. Now here's a quick thing too. I'm just trying to watch time and make sure that we. Like, I hope you're with me so far. Again, this is just like Lab Four, but you know, it's also like the big old duck in a way. And notice this: if you're really careful, if you're really following this, strictly speaking. This is almost like, talk about extra, this is almost like a bonus thing, or here's another strategy for how you could really rock the exam or really capture my positive attention. If you're following me so far, if you really think about it, technically there's there's two roots, just like there were in Big Old Duck. Technically there's, you know, positive and negative square root of 200. Um, and, and yet, and I'll say this, I'm not gonna write this down, but just for those, because I don't want to confuse people, but the math spits out two answers. They both have to be meaningful. Now it's true in this in this problem, I'm only gonna use one of those answers because the way the question is phrased, it only cares about one of those answers. Only one of those answers is gonna be useful to the question, but they're both meaningful. Just to be really quick, what does negative 14.1 mean? Well, it means this. And, and again, if you're following me then and you put something like this down in your exam, boy, well, I know that you know what's going on. The negative, the, the math is just saying, look, if something, if something, uh, if something is, descends this height with this amount of free fall acceleration, like, like at what time will it be at the bottom 
of that height. And all the math knows is that the acceleration is constant, i.e. going on forever, that acceleration, right? Gravity is there forever. It doesn't change. So, so the truth is, if you think about it, this bomb that went like this, that absolutely could have been the second half of a movie, which started with a bomb being thrown up from the ground. If a bomb were thrown up from the ground, it would go up with a certain height, with a certain speed. It would go up, 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 up to the plane. It would reach a zero velocity at the plane as this problem assumes that it has zero vertical velocity at the plane. And then it would come, 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 come down. In other words, the amount of time a bomb would take to go up from the ground to exactly reach the plane with a vertical velocity of zero, the amount of time it would take to go up would be 14.1 seconds as well, right? So really, this bomb could be at the ground 14.1 seconds after it falls out of the plane, but also as far as the math and the physics are concerned, it could have been there 14.1 seconds before it came out of the plane. This entire experiment could have been rent, rent. Now, we just happen not to care about that. We're, we're not looking at that part of the experiment. So we're not going to use that negative 14. We're going to ignore it. But not because it's wrong, but because the question isn't interested in it, just so you understand. So if you were to discuss any, if you were to be careful and discuss any of this, that would really show great understanding. And it would show how you see this related to Big Old Duck. It is true, but not helpful to this question. I have a question. Yes. Yes. Um, what happens to like the one time part of the question? Where it says the back of the plane, <laughs> um, it says the back of the yacht crosses the same line precisely one tenth of a second later. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fantastic question and an excellent point. So, yes, that is not there to trick you. That must be relevant to this problem, but it's not relevant yet to this piece. I'm totally going to use that information. I'm going to show you where in a second. But here's the here's how I know that it wasn't relevant to this piece. That is a piece of horizontal information. That is there to tell me something about what's going on in the x-axis, which I'm definitely going to need. But the x-axis and the y-axis are independent. They're happening at the same time, but they're independent. To, to cut to the chase, that information there, again, if you're thinking of this as like lab four, that's like how much time it took the marble to go through the photo gates in lab four. And the reason you needed that information ultimately was to find out how fast the marble was shooting off the table so that ultimately you could find out how far the marble went. And that is ultimately what's gonna happen to this problem. We're gonna use that to figure out how far the bomb goes horizontally on the ground. But the whole key is that we separate Y from X in these kind of problems. Like that, that is the key to these problems. So all these two-dimensional problems is we do we treat each dimension as happening at the same time but independently so i mean so long story short i will use that but i'm not using it yet and to everybody else like that's my physics answer to what chris just very like intelligently asked that's my physics answer but also on my test taking strategy answer please remember like each one of these physics problems throws a lot of information to you at first and you do have to like present it all in a diagram, but yes, you have to take it all seriously and assume it's all relevant, but it's not all going to be relevant together in every part of the problem. So don't, don't let your brain get over, like you just pick and choose the fruit that you need as you're walking through the garden or whatever. But I hope, uh, let me, I'm going to, does that, or did, did that answer the question? Uh, uh, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So I'm going to go on now. So, so I think, oh, so basically I, I did get an answer here. Like the question was, what's the time to the ground? And, and the answer time to the ground is 14.1 seconds approximately. So now we go. And again, I'm being even a little careless. You should always in your final answer, which you circle, you should literally re refer back to the original question. Like really, I, I'm not going to go back now, but I really should say like, to go to the ground, the time equals blah, 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 for like, you know, be as formal as you can, but okay. So now I'm going to the next question. The next question, oh, be, okay, be. Oh, so this is where Chris's thing is gonna come into play. Okay, Um, how much time? Right, 
Uh, yeah. So now it's from equator. How far? So now we're solving for x. We're solving for how. We're we're really solving for how far does the bomb go horizontally? Like like in other words, how if 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 if, if we were if we thought we were trying to hit a target, and we open those hatches and let go of that bomb right as we pass the equator, trying to hit the tower. If we're trying to hit that tower, we're going to fail is the point. If we drop the bomb right when we were at the height of the tower, we're going to fail. We're not, it's not because it's going to move horizontally while it's falling. Some people might think if they didn't take a physics class or some of us might think that the bomb is going to land short of the tower. This whole problem assumes or is exploring the fact that, no, the bomb is going to land ahead of the tower. Notice the plane is flying south, and it asks how far south of the tower does the bomb land. Again, from, like, this is lab four. Uh, it may not look like lab four. In lab four, it may look like you just fired a bullet off a stationary table. And here, a bullet is falling out of a moving plane. But what we're trying to say with relativity, the more you think about relativity, those two are equivalent. Either way, we've got an object that while it's falling is moving forward. Whether we shot it off a table or we dropped it from a forward moving plane. It's the same thing is what we're trying to say here. The bomb is moving forward to the south while it's falling down. So it's going to land somewhat south of the tower. Um, so again, this is, we can, okay, so I'm, I'm not writing this, I'm not labeling the steps anymore. I'm just moving forward here. I think you get the point. We can um, now treat the x-axis the x-axis independently. So we look in the x-axis now. Um, we could say something like, again, we could use the same equation. We could say like x equals one half a x t squared plus v naught x t, right? We, we could, I'm not saying that's the only option, but you could do that. But if you do that, then you realize, okay, in the x direction, in the x-axis, a x, equals zero, a x equals zero, right? There's no gravity in the x direction. So there's no acceleration in the x direction. That doesn't mean that equation is wrong. It means I'm gonna cross out that term and call it zero and then the equation will be easier than I thought. That's cool. V O X, what is that? This is where Chris's question comes into play. Like, like what is the hard, what is the initial horizontal velocity of the bomb? Well, Average velocity equals displacement per time, right? The the this bomb. I'm, I'm looking back at the picture, or I mean, this. Sorry, I'm just getting there. Yeah the the whole airplane is twenty meters long, and the time that it takes from head to tail of the airplane. Is, is Chris's observation 0.1 seconds, right? I mean, I think that's what it says. Yeah. Right, so, so think relativity, in effect, that control tower, like what I'm saying, uh, Galileo's principle of relativity. From the perspective or the reference frame of the plane, if you're in the plane watching, if you're in the plane, and again, remember the whole thing about sort of like this whole exam. We have all these equations, right? But what I'm saying is how you know how to use the equations, how do you know how to set them up or relate them is all through this lens that we now have of perspective. Uh, and 
What I'm saying here is if you're watching this problem from the perspective of the plane, if you are in the plane watching, you see a control tower come toward you, right? And you see a control tower first hit the, like past the front of your plane. And then a little while later, the control tower passes the back of your plane from your perspective, right? Like from your perspective, you're just sitting still watching the world go by you. And your perspective is as correct as anybody else's. So the, the control tower passes by the plane. The control tower moves 20 meters in 0.1 second. So I'm saying, so I'm saying like V, Just any part is worth it. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll do it. Right? If T stands for tower and P stands for plane, then the velocity of the tower relative to the plane is 200 meters per second to the north. Therefore, GPR form for case two, if, if the tower is going 200 meters per second relative to the plane to the north, then the plane is going past the tower at 200 meters per second to the south. That's where the point one comes in. I, I mean, I'm probably making this deeper than it needs to be. But uh, the point is, the speed at which that plane is going past the tower is 200 meters per second in the horizontal direction, in the horizontal direction. Right, So the bomb is going horizontally at 200 meters per second to the south the moment it falls down. Again, that's just like the bullet or the ball that got in lab four. It was going forward at some amount of speed the moment it started falling down. Those two things are happening at the same time, but they're happening independently. So... The x-axis physics... And the y-axis physics are occurring independently. Yes, they're occurring. In, they're not affecting each other. The vertical, the gra like gravity is not affecting the x-axis, vice versa. Therefore, we were able to solve for numbers independently. But, right, that's what like, everything we did so far was treating them independently. We broke them up. But... They're happening simultaneously. That's what we always keep saying, independently but simultaneously. Therefore, the time is the same. So we can take the time that we got from the y-axis and plug it into the x-axis. That's what you did in lab four. That's not what we did in the big old duck, only in the, we went from y to x instead of x to y or whatever. Um, so t is same for both. So we can say x equals vx times t, and that equals 200 meters per second times the t that we got. In, oh, yeah, 14.1. The t that we got in the y-axis, right? So we get... Um, approximately 1.4 times 10 to the third meters. Am I doing something wrong? No. Um, it's good. At, and so the answer is the bomb fell 
balls, 1.4 times 10 to the third meters to the south of the tower. That's the answer to that one. I'm just looking, right? And I'm looking, uh, did I lose something in the chat? Oh, okay, wait, I'm looking at the chat. Oh, yeah, sorry. So I'm, um, yeah, so Chris is ahead of me. I mean, I didn't see that eight minutes ago. But yes, 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 that's the point. Like, were you, um, we're saying velocity equals displacement over time. But the time that we're using is the time that we got in the y-axis. And that's the point. That's, this is really, it's just like what you do in Big Old Duck. It's just like what you do in the wild coyote problem. I mean, the roadrunner coyote problem. The whole principle here is any two-dimensional problem, we break up and we do the two dimensions separately, independently. Like we, all of our equations apply to each axis independently, but we believe they're all happening at the same time. So time is the common denominator or the common factor. So yes, I mean, I'm agreeing with what Chris said. So that's the answer to that one. Okay, we are good. looking at phases. And south that. or north? It's south, right? South, yeah, good question. But yeah, yeah, the bomb falls on the south side, side of the tower of the of the tower yeah like in front in other words in front of the tower does that make sense i mean and that is a really good or does that okay and that's like a really good like again why i'm glad he's asking that or why that's a good thing to clarify is yeah if i didn't know physics if i'm just picturing this in my mind i would probably picture that the bomb would fall short of the tower you might picture that the bomb like sort of falls back like that's what a lot of people picture i mean and 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 look honestly if it were a feather if it were a feather it, the wind probably you know it, it, would, it would get caught in the air and it probably would fall back but i don't think a bomb is a feather i don't in other words i don't think air is going to have much of an effect on this bomb but only gravity and the laws of physics will so i think the bomb is going to land in front of um in front of the tower, i.e. to the south. Okay, I'm going to keep going, but good question. Okay, I'm just looking at the time. All right. In some ways, I think that was the hardest part. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to see. Now here, I guess to go back to someone's question earlier who may or may not be at John Jay right now. Um, Like this question, there's a couple of questions here. Well, no, I'm not. I think this question C is a little hard to do the five step method right here. It's like sort of asking you like a yes or no question. So it, yes, I guess that's a little hard to do the five step method. But and plus, again, I want to warn you, like I'm trying to make tracks now and make sure to finish this before the period. So I'm not labeling my steps anymore. I'm more and more cutting down to like answers. I'm trying to explain to you what to do. I Again, if you're listening right now, what you don't want to do is just copy these things directly into your exam for a thousand reasons that you want to use this as a model for your thinking and then put your thinking into the exam. But okay, um, so so C, um, at the moment the bomb touches the ground, is the elevator cage already there, blah, blah, blah. So the whole thing about the elevator cage, which I'm now gonna think about, it, it says in the problem, oh, if you scroll back, it says in the original fact pattern, at, at precisely the same instant that the plane crossed the equator and drops the bomb at precisely that moment, like, like something is dropped from the same height and go, goes vertically down. So in effect, what we're saying is like, if you were in the lab, like at the moment, well, at the moment you shoot the ball, someone's standing at your lab table and drops a ball from exactly the same height at exactly the same time. Right. Or if you want to picture it, just this is like, and this is sort of a classic physics thing. Like say you were standing in the middle of a field and you had a shotgun or a gun in one hand and, and, and you just had a bullet in your other hand. And you went one, two, three, and they're both at the same height. And you're aiming the bullet, uh, you're aiming the gun purely horizontally. If you went one, two, three, go, and you fire, you squeeze the trigger, and you drop the bullet. So one bullet goes like, like, and the other bullet just goes, right. What we're asking is how would the times of those two trajectories compare? Um, so the question is, how does this time compare to a time for purely vertical free fall? And the answer is they're exactly the same. I mean, that is the answer. Um, where, where, where. So answer. 
the times must be identical. We assumed that, we assumed GPR in our time solution. What I'm saying here, and again, that this is the kind of sentence, if you just write down, we assume GPR in our time solution, like it doesn't mean anything unless you, like that's my words. No one would use those words besides me. What I'm saying is this, when we solve for the time in part A, we, if you look at our equation, all we did was look at what would happen if something just fell directly down. We didn't take into account at all the fact of the thing going forward. That's our whole point here, is that the amount of time to the ground for something that goes like this is exactly equivalent to something that just goes, but it just falls straight down. Um, because the X and Y axes are independent. So, and to some people, that's a surprise. That's what we're trying to teach you that like, yes, if you stood in the middle of a field and you went, bit, I don't care how fast that bullet got shot out of the gun. I don't care how far it goes. It could go for miles while it's falling down. But the moment it hits the ground, the other one hits the ground. It's doing a lot. I mean, it's literally, I used to say this, I don't know if this helps anybody, but it's, it's literally like if you said to me and my brother, okay, you each, I mean, this is a little gross actually, but if you were like, you, you each have, I'm not even going to say it actually. All right, let's keep going. It, it doesn't matter how much one bullet accomplishes horizontally during its vertical journey. The vertical journey is still the same. Um, okay, so that's C. Oh, but then it asks, oh, then it tells you, okay, should have skipped the line here probably, but now it keeps dropping bombs like three seconds after the first one. Um, so indeed, Bomb number two is dropped at T equals three, right? That's what it's saying. Um, and there's like bad grammar here that should be corrected, but um, when should bomb number two, how much total time will elapse from its release, total time since the beginning? Well, the answer is, it was right. Well, the total time will just be the, the, the point is this next bomb is going to take exactly the same amount of time to reach the ground as the first bomb did, which we said is about 14.1 seconds. So the total time should equal, I, I'm, it's not a trick question. The total time should equal three seconds plus 14.1 seconds, which equals like 17.1 seconds. Hold on, one second, sorry. Oh, sorry, things are happening everywhere. Um, okay, that's a, then, so that's D. It's kind of a stupid question, I guess. I don't, I don't remember why I asked it, but uh, then, um, then E, where should we expect to find this next bomb? Oh, I see what it's getting at. All right, well, all right, where is bomb number two? Well, same deal. Like each one of these bombs, the point is each one of these bombs should do the same physics is each an X bomb, right? So, um, so, 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 this bomb should be
again, I'm going a little bit fast now. I'm just answering them. You still have to explain things and stuff like that. But relative to bomb number one, bomb number two should be Two hundred meters per second times three seconds of time. In other words, approximately six hundred meters to the south. Right. Let me explain that for a second. I'm just looking at the time, like. There's a couple of things going on here. I'm doing it sort of fast, but bomb number, it's asking where, it's, it's asking you to picture like where are these bombs going to, how are these bombs going to start creating a formation in the ground if we're dropping them in succession? And the first thing it wants to make sure that you realize, the first thing the question wants to make sure you realize is bomb number two is going to be ahead of bomb number one, ahead, like to the south of it, for the same reason that bomb number one was ahead of the control tower. Right, all these bombs are moving forward while we drop them. Um, so, so each one's going to be ahead of the last one. Each bomb is going to take like fourteen point one seconds to fall, but that's but the fourteen point one seconds is not how far apart they are from each other. Again, this is relativity. Like it's fourteen one point one seconds relative to the plane. But think about it, if both of these bombs were both dropped at the same time, right, they would each take 14.1 seconds to, to fall. So they would each land in the same place, right? Each one is taking 14.1 seconds to fall, but each one is taking that. So if two were dropped at the same time, they both land in the same place. They wouldn't land like 14.1 times 200 apart from each other. So the fact that bomb number one and bomb number two are dropped three seconds apart, all we have to worry about is how far is bomb number two going to get extra in those three seconds? Like, yes, it's going to get farther than, than 600 meters in total. But we're just asking how much farther apart. We're just asking how much farther ahead of bomb number one is it? Well, in the extra three seconds that it has to travel, it travels extra 200 meters per second times those three seconds. So it travels an extra 600 meters. I'm dragging this out, but the point is it's relativity again. Bomb number two, that's what I don't have to take into account the 14.1 because everything is using the 14.1. I'm just going to go on. You can think about it. I mean, it's either obvious or it's confusing and you could think, but I'm going to go on. because two. Um, oh, and we're, thank goodness we're almost, okay. Okay, so we have two minutes, but we just have to take two pictures here. Here's the bottom, the most important thing. And if, this is just a picture, right? But here too, it's just a picture, but you want to make sure you understand this and explain it. Like, actually, I'm going to go straight. I'm going to go straight to G. G will cover F. We're saying if you were a journalist, I've got two minutes, now bear with, I mean, like, listen to this closely. If you were a journalist, uh, uh, whatever, if you were on Earth looking at this situation, um, what would you see under the plane? And the real question is, at, at any given moment, at any given moment, what would you see? Like, you'd see a bunch of bombs under the plane, right? But the question is, would be, the real question is, would they be dragging back in a line like this? Or would they be moving, would they be dragging forward, since we're saying each bomb moves forward, in a line like this, or would they be would they be in a curve or something like that? Since we're saying each individual bomb, the, the answer is this, and you really have to think about it because it's not obvious until you think about it. The answer is the picture on the front of the practice test or, or, or one of the tests. The answer is the bombs would be in a vertical formation under the plane. Now, I want you to think about that when you're studying together or in lab or whatever. That is not obvious. It is true. But it's not obvious. I'm saying, and and it's really weird because a movie of any individual bomb, a movie of any individual bomb would would look like that. Would be any individual bomb moves forward while it moves down, so it moves in a curve toward the forward, but toward the south. 
But that's not what this question's asking. The question's asking if the plane is moving and it's dropping a bomb and then a bomb and then a bomb, how do the bombs like find themselves underneath the plane? And they would find themselves in a vertical arrangement. They would all stay in a line together, which is very surprising. It may be. But the reason it's true is that each one of these bombs is falling down, but each one of these bombs is maintaining a 200 meter per second southern velocity. Each one of these bombs is doing exactly what the plane's doing forward wise. They're all falling down while they do that. So you'd see, but at any given moment, they're all in the same place horizontally. Okay. So the answer is it would look like this and how many bombs would be? Well, well, basically, since the bombs are thrown every three seconds, but you've only got a total of 14 seconds between, but, but for one to hit the ground, basically, you're only going to fit four bombs in this, because 14 divided by three is four point something, right? You can, There won't be a fifth bomb here, because by the time there'd be a fifth bomb, the first one would already hit the ground. So the answer to G is that, and the answer to F is four. There'd be like four bombs in there. Oh, it's and, and it doesn't, and the balcony being 500 feet up doesn't matter that it's 500. That's sort of extraneous information. But okay, that's 420. I know I did that at the end a little bit quickly. Hopefully you'll talk about it in lab, but really think about that. And I'm just looking, oh no, it's not. Uh, so you, there's a picture, whatever. Think about, okay, sorry. That's class. Uh, I will hang out for a second if there's questions. I don't mean to kick you out, but I know you guys have to go. I guess you have to go to lab. It's been a pleasure serving you and serving my country. Um, yes, thank you. Have a nice week. Good luck with this. Uh, do your best. May the net force be with you. Do you live go to lab right now? Oh, sorry. Wait, is there, oh, thank no. Thank you very much, as always. Thank you. Sorry, Chris. Yes. Or oh, I'm going to turn off the recording. But yes. Oh, I said thank you. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Okay, you're welcome. Wait, is Mercedes still there? <laughs>